We begin with Hogan Gidley, the Deputy Press Secretary, live from Washington tonight. Hogan, good to have you with us um, tonight. So, you know, in, in that sense, in terms of sowing discord in the country, uh, we do feel as politically divided as ever, even after this report. Absolutely, but let's be honest. Krugman is clueless and he is crazy. Uh, he has no idea what makes this country great because everything he stands for sides with socialist countries. He's fawning over the Soviet Union and places like Venezuela, and he wants our economy to mimic that, even though this president uh, came in and bucked all of the predictions by people like Mr. Krugman himself, who said we would irrevocably be damaged by President Trump's uh, economic policies. Instead, the exact opposite has happened, and as you know, we have record low unemployment with African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Asian Americans, women. We are going gangbusters in this, uh, in this economy, and that's something that he failed to predict. In fact, he has been woefully inaccurate on so many predictions, up to and including what would happen after this Mueller report. Let's be honest. We've seen 2,800 subpoenas, 500 witnesses, 500 warrants, 40 FBI agents, 19 attorneys, right. and a partridge in a pear tree. Well, <laughs> there is no collusion, no corruption, no obstruction, a complete and total exoneration, and we are moving forward well, he, despite what, right, what Mr. Krugman I, I claims. Um, and I'm sure he would, he would disagree with some of your assertions there, um, but those are your opinions. Uh, as you state them. He also said in his piece that the Trump administration was aware of this intervention and welcomed it. Um, he also, you know, you know, we know that the report said that based on the available information, the investigation did not establish such coordination. But what do you think, you know, the White House should do in terms of communication to try to quell the discord? Because what we're seeing so far is, is a lot of pushback to these subpoenas, pushback to, to everything that, that the right. other side is, is wanting to do to continue this discord. What are you folks going to well, do to try to right. calm things down? Well, what are we going to do? What is, what is the media and the people like Paul Krugman going to do? 93% of the coverage against this president is negative. They pushed a lie on the American people and said the president was guilty of treason. I asked right. you what the, what the White House, because as you look at this, you know, I think it's true that if the Russians wanted to sow discord, they must still be laughing all the way because they, it, it's still happening. It's still happening, well, that, right? Despite that's the findings they have of willing, the Mueller report. So what but is, that's because they have willing partners in, in the Democrat Party and most of the mainstream media. Listen, we've reached across the aisle. The president has had uh, Democrat leadership and the rank and file over uh, to the White House to have mm -hmm. conversations about how we move forward with things like infrastructure, things like uh, immigration, health care. In the State of the Union, he said, you guys have a choice. We can move forward on getting some policy accomplishments for the American people, bettering our country, or you guys can focus on investigations. They have done nothing in the first 100 days except, except push lies onto the American people with no proof and no evidence, and they wanted it to be true so badly that now they have nothing to say. And while I understand the reason they cannot backtrack, they have to double down, is because then they would be admitting that the last two years right, of their well, life has been a complete question and total before, before a waste of time. time. Um, you know, the, the criticism against the White House is that not recognizing the attempts that were made in terms of the hacking and in terms of the, you know, the Facebook purchases. And we heard Jared Kushner talking about that yesterday, you know, saying that, that really in terms of the actual technical attempts, they were not really that significant. Um, but are you concerned about future elections? And do you feel like the president um, looks at that as, as sort of some kind of acceptance that, that they were able to meddle, meddle in the elections as something that well, he doesn't want to talk about, as, no. as Christian Nielsen said? Yeah, no. No, no, look, there are a couple things. First of all, that, that, that story is just incorrect, but there are a couple things here. Listen, we now know. How is that story incorrect? Well, well we, that, that conversation never happened. Mick Mulvaney said it never happened. And the fact remains that while the Democrats continue to push uh, this lie, we know a couple of things. One is that the, the Russians did not affect the outcome of this election. The president was elected freely and fairly. And, and, and we also understand that this happened under Barack Obama in 2014. He did nothing. In that time, this administration has now done something that no other administration has done in history. We now work with state, local, and federal officials to share intelligence. We've brought in the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Justice, the FBI. We're already conducting, uh, at the local level, breach tests. We're working on trying to hack into our own elections right. to see how we can better protect the American people and the vote. The Barack Obama administration did none of that. We are stopping it. It's unacceptable. This president has called out Russia from the get-go. 
when other, when other presidents like Barack Obama sat in the Oval Office and told Dmitry Medvedev that he'd be happy to work with him after the election was over, All he'd right. have more flexibility. Right. We've done the I opposite. Got, I got your point. Hogan, thank you very much. Good to see you tonight. Thanks for being thank here. Thank you.